Welcome to Russian History with Dr. Bravkin. Today's presentation is on the murder of Kirov, one of the most fascinating episodes of Soviet history. Who was Kirov? He was a Stalinist. He was a loyal member of the Politburo of the Central Committee. He was promoted by Stalin to the very high position as the head of the Leningrad Party organization, member of the Central Committee, member of Politburo. He was totally loyal. I read most of his speeches. He's completely loyal, completely obedient. There was except one a moment that I will discuss later. So on the 1st of December 1934, a, named, uh, a, a man named Nikolaev walked into the building of this party committee, Smolny in Leningrad, waited for him in the corridor, and when uh, Kirov was approaching his office, he shot him in the neck and killed him. Immediately after the murder of Kirov, Stalin comes to Leningrad from Moscow with 200 of NKVD secret police officials, and the first thing they do they arrest, of course, Nikolaev is arrested, he's interrogated, and he's executed the next day. Uh, and then Yagoda, who is the chairman of the NKVD, the, the secret police, tells Stalin that probably this is the work of foreign agents. To which Stalin replies, no, you have to look in the Leningrad Party organization, you have to look among Zinovievites, that is the followers of Zinoviev. Zinoviev is a discredited party official who Stalin had removed from office back in 1926. So he had nothing to do with any of So the official story that Stalin presented and that stayed for many decades as the, uh, as, as the follow-up to the Kirov murder is that the enemies were discovered who begin to assassinate party leaders. One of the great heroes of a communist struggle in Russia, Comrade Kirov, was assassinated by enemies. Therefore, enemies have to be unmasked. They have to be tried. And immediately, there was an arrest of Zinovi, who had nothing to do with any of this, but most importantly, of the key leading members of the Leningrad Party organization and of the NKVD of Leningrad. So it was Stalin used, used this assassination as a first stage in order to unleash uh, big trials that were going to follow and after that the terror campaign against the Communist Party officials uh, and many others. Now let's just go a little bit over why Kirov and then why in 1934. Now, as I said before, Kirov was a very obedient, uh, in all his speeches, he's praising and praising Stalin, great construction of communism, great leader, blah, 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 all of that. But there was one thing that I found in his speeches that Stalin may not have liked, in fact, two. Uh, and that is in January 1934, Congress of the Communist Party. Uh, and as a matter of fact, Khrushchev tells us that 70% of those who attended that Congress uh, were later executed. And when I read the speech of Comrade Kirov at this Congress, he said that those people who were associated with various kinds of uh, oppositions in the past, such as Trotsky and Zinoviev and Kamenev and, and so forth, they are now uh, they have now repented, and now they will be joined in the Communist Party as comrades and will uh, contribute to the construction of socialism. In other words, Kirov's message in his speech was that they should give and forget, that they are welcome to stay in the party and contribute. Now, obviously, that's not what Stalin wanted to do, and we know it because of what he did. Uh, immediately, uh, uh, Zinoviev and, and hundreds of others were arrested in 1935. So uh, this is one reason why Kirov. That was another reason. And the second reason uh, was that is connected with the so-called uh, Rutin affair. Now, Rutin was a party secretary in uh, Moscow, and then the also, he was removed, by, like most of the other critics, by 1932. And this is the, the epicenter of the Rutin affair. Basically, Rutin was a real oppositionist. He was a real communist, and he wrote a so-called Rutin platform, uh, which criticized the, the collectivization in very harsh terms. Uh, and so what is then there was a discussion on what to do about Rutin, and this is the second offense of Kirov in the mind of Comrade Stalin. Kirov was against uh, 
death penalty for Rutin. And as we know from many other sources, uh, there were other members of the Central Committee who probably later also perished, uh, and also in the Politburo who did not want death penalty for Rutin, and he didn't get it. So Stalin went along for a while, but he must have kept a grudge against Kirov. Uh, and Rutin got four years uh, in jail, but then he was executed in 1936, like many others. Uh, now we know from this reasoning that Stalin had good enough reasons to kill Kirov. Uh, how is Nikolaev connected with this? Well, there are two suspicious things about Nikolaev, although all kinds of research has been done in recent years and nobody was able to prove convincingly any documents that link Stalin to the murder of Kirov. But there is enough so circumstantial evidence to suggest that, uh, that Kirov was killed under orders uh, and by the NKVD, the secret police, that uh, obviously executed the will of Comrade Stalin. So Nikolaev was a minor party official who had a grudge against uh, Kirov because he was expelled from the party and so forth. But the point is he was cultivated, he had contacts with the NKVD, and most important piece of evidence is that he had a legal right to bear arms. He had a gun. Now, the, the, in Stalin's Russia, you just don't get a right to have a gun unless you're very, very well connected, unless you are a part of the secret police uh, or a party official of very high ranking. Moreover, in September uh, 34, uh, he was stopped at uh, the small May entrance, the building uh, of the party committee, and they found a gun on him and he didn't have a permit. But for some interesting reason, this was not confiscated. He was not arrested. He was not charged with anything. And he continued to have a gun, even though he had no permit. The most damning piece of evidence, I think, is that he actually entered the small way, the headquarters of the party, with a legal permit that he had and he was carrying a gun and therefore they allowed him to walk in. That means it could not possibly be any other case that the the guards were instructed to let him in. There's no way you can get into the party headquarters carrying a gun and nobody would even check you or ask you for why it is there. He must have had a permit uh, and a valid one to carry a gun and to enter the small way. The second interesting thing that was immediately executed so that there's no interrogation at all was the next day when Stalin arrived, they killed him. And, that, and then there were a series of strange murders. For example, the bodyguard of Kirov, who was supposed to testify the next day, he was taken in a truck to go to the court. And during that ride in the truck, somehow he broke his skull in a car accident. But the driver, nothing happened to the driver. Somehow he was, uh, he had an accident while being driven. In other words, there was many, many others. And, and the final uh, uh, circumstantial evidence is that the all NKVD officials of uh, Leningrad were arrested supposedly for negligence that they allowed enemies to crawl into Smolny and kill Kirov and then they were all exiled at first to a benign camp in Siberia but then we know that by 1936 they were all executed. Now this whole chain of events suggests to me without any doubt whatsoever that uh, Nikolai was acting on the orders of NKVD and that he killed Kirov in direct uh, uh, part of the conspiracy to unleash a serious enough uh, atmosphere, serious enough challenge, so that anybody could be now unmasked. Uh, because you cannot just attack Zinoviev and Kamenev, who were friends of Lenin. Uh, you cannot at attack all these people who for years, Uglanov and Tomsky, many, many, many others, in the top echelons of the party. How could they, nobody would believe that they were, uh, that they were foreign agents or, or terrorists. Uh, so in order to do that, you had to have a real serious assassination of a very, very good leader so that he could made into a hero and that could be used as a pretext to start this unfolding uh, drama. Now, the next big question, of course, is why did uh, Stalin need to do it and why in 1934? Now, the very simple answer is that it has to do with the politics in the country by 1934. To remind you very, very clearly, uh, the, the Congress that, that took place is called the Congress of Victors. 
uh, and that means that it's the victorious end to collectivization. So they celebrated collectivization and its victorious conclusion. As Khrushchev revealed, 70% of the Congress uh, were later executed. Now, for a long time, there was no real explanation, and the, all the time in the 1960s and 70s and 80s, the, the explanation was that Stalin didn't like the old Bolsheviks, and therefore he just persecuted all these, uh, you know, real communists, real dedicated revolutionaries and all that stuff. No, that's, that's not the reason. Uh, the reason that Stalin had a grudge against the party, the Communist Party, has nothing to do with them being Bolshevik or no Bolshevik and be opposition or not. It had to do with two things. The way the collectivization worked out and the devastation that it brought and the kind of resentment of Stalin that was very widespread uh, in the party. And for that, I have two primarily pieces of evidence. And one of them uh, is going to read to you is the... Uh, description of the situation in the country uh, in the routine platform. So the, plan the robbery of the rural population, forced collectivization, led to the fact that only 30% of livestock of 1937 survived today. And even those remnants of the collective and state farms are dying for the lack of fodder. More than half of the seeds for the sowing is gone. Land is poorly cultivated. Any personal interest in farming has been killed. Labor is supported by coercion and repression. Collective farms are falling apart. All young and healthy flee from the villages. Millions of people wander around the country. In the future, there is impoverishment and desolation in the villages. In the long term, severe hunger next year. So this is a very accurate description from millions of other sources of the situation in the country in 1932. We do know now that collectivization was a disaster, that there was huge famine that Ukrainians call Holodomor, that, that millions of people, at least 5 million people died in that famine that was induced by collectivization, and which is the subject of my previous videos if you're interested to look at it. So you could say fairly accurately Rutin described the situation in his platform. Now let's look a little bit further. Rutin wrote this platform as something obvious and something that everybody knew. Other than propaganda, everybody knew that there were millions of people overflowing the cities, that there were peasants abandoning the villages, that there was huge famine, that there was disaster in the collectivization. Everybody knew that. So this part of Rutin's platform is very well proven. Now let's see how Rutin describes the situation in the party according to Rutin. At present, almost any party Philistine, layman, or even the party official is upset and whines about what is happening in the party and in the country. One part of the party is imprisoned and exiled. The other, surrendered, demoralized, and spat upon leads a miserable existence, and the third, the rotten one, turned into a loyal servants of the dictator. So this is how he describes the party, that, that those who used to be in opposition in the 1920s, they've completely surrendered, they've completely uh, abandoned any thought of resistance to Stalin, and they uh, have no, no longer any capacity to act. But then he continues, and this is the crucial sentence because Stalin read this platform. They hate Stalin with every fiber of their soul, and if the struggle against him is successfully launched, they will join it. Now, this was the opinion of Rutin, the party secretary from Moscow, that if there is some kind of movement against Stalin of the masses or of the part of the party, uh, that these former oppositionists who repent now and say that they completely support the Communist Party rule and, and leadership of Stalin, they will re re rebel. They may join the rebellion. So this leads me to think that Stalin had a grudge uh, against the uh, party, 
because the party was criticizing him, because everybody in 1932 was talking about the collapse of uh, collectivization, that the conversations are going on at the party congress in 1934, that there were some speculations of even a voting against Stalin. So he had to respond. He wanted to crush them all and to recast the Communist Party and make it an obedient tool, which he did. Uh, in 1934, 300,000, 33, 300,000 uh, members were expelled. In 1932, another 300,000 expelled. That's 25% of the party. And then in the following years, in 1935, 36, 37, uh, 1 million were shot, just shot. This is official statistics in 1937, all Communist Party members. And then there were several million exiled. In other words, Stalin have completely reshaped the elite, the ruling elite of the uh, Soviet Russia of Communist Party, uh, and in order to do that, in order to unleash this terror, he needed the murder of Kirov, and Kirov was a convenient target because he was against uh, death penalty for Lutin, and because he dared to say at the party congress that the opposition should be forgiven. So, for these reasons, uh, the murder started the great terror. Thank you very much, and I hope you'll subscribe and listen to my other videos on collectivization.